Welcome to another episode of the Free Tag Team. In this uh, episode, we are going to cover the Free Tag Server installation. Now, Free Tag Server installation can be very simple or very complicated, and because of that, we are going to divide this in multiple videos. So, if we look at the complete installation, we will need to create target machines. That can be any number between one and five different machines currently. Then we will install FreeTag server. We will configure and run the FreeTag server, configure the UI. And then we can also install and configure the web map, the video servers, and install and configure Node-RED so that we have integration capabilities that we call the FreeTag app. Today, we are going to cover the first part. So we will assume that you have already created the target machines and we are going only to install the FreeTag server, configure and run the FreeTag server and configure the web UI. So what I'm sharing is the wonderful documentation that we have created in uh, years and I will link that in the video description. So the first thing that you have to uh, think about is using the proper uh, Linux distribution. And one reason why you want to do that is to avoid conflicts. And very often this will come with everything you need. So the first thing that uh, you need to do in order to be sure that uh, you do have everything that you need is to run a sudo apt update and sudo apt install Python 3 so that all the different packages will be installed. And I have already done it, so we will not do that in this um, demo. The next thing that you will do is to install pip. So pip is a package for Python, and that has been already done, so we will not go there. And then, uh, if necessary, you can also need to install different Python libraries. And here you have the command, as I said, we are going to uh, put the link in the description so you can follow those steps. Another thing that may be important is uh, if you already have a previous installation, you may need to deinstall the previous installation so that you have a clean installation. It is possible to upgrade the server. However, that may cause problems. So if you want to avoid any kind of problem and you have already a existing installation, please deinstall fast the previous one and save your database if you have important data there. So let's start with the installation of the FreeTag server. To uh, install FreeTag server, we need to connect to a machine. And here I have this uh, wonderful small utility called uh, WinSCP. WinSCP is <coughs> um, a system that will allow you to navigate easily uh, remote servers. And all you need to do is to be able to connect to the server. So I'm going to open a new connection. And you see here, I have already created a, a demo instance that is currently empty. So I'm going to log in to that demo instance. And here we see some packages that I have already installed. But what we need to do is uh, to use uh, WinSCP to start putting. Put is another pro program that you need in order to successful um, work with uh, remote server, especially Unix servers. So here's our putty instance, and what we want to do is to uh, work with putty, and from now on we're working with putty. So in putty, the first thing that we want to do is to uh, check that uh, FreeTag server is not installed, just in case. So we will use pip check FreeTag server. And we can see that we don't have any uh, ability to check it because it basically is not there. And so what we will do is to install FreeTag server. So to do that easily, what uh, I will do is to install FreeTag server and the UI in a single command. And what we need to run is sudo python3 dash m pip install FreeTag server and then this command between brackets UI will install also the UI package. 
now the system collect all the different files and you see we have just installed freetag server and freetag server ui now if we check again saying check freetag server we should see that a freetag server is uh, installed so the next thing that we need to do is to run a freetag server and the first time that uh, the system runs uh, you will see that we will have a, a wizard uh, that uh, step by step will bring us to the configuration so would you like to use a yum config file and uh, we said yes Uh, the next thing is, uh, would you like to use uh, the config file that is located in ops FTS config yum? We say yes. Now, the next thing is the IP. And typically, uh, FTS is clever and will discover the IP dynamically. However, you may want to uh, double check that with your provider because that is extremely important so that the system works. I know that this is the system, the IP that we have also used here to connect to the server. And so I'm pretty confident that is correct. So I will simply say enter and that will set this to be the IP. Uh, next is the database. Uh, Freetalk server can use two different types of database. Uh, can use uh, MySQL that is much more performant but is currently experimental uh, and uh, you can use a SQLite data, uh, database that is portable and is pretty stable so we will use this one and we will set the database to be in opt FTS database that is the standard uh, same thing with uh, the path so we expect FTS to be located under Python but just in case we may want to double check that and to do that we need to navigate to the Python package and see if uh, Freetag service indeed installed there so you see uh, By switching on uh, WinESP, we can see that Freetag server is installed under Python 8 distribution packages Freetag server. Now, if you have another version of Python, uh, for example, 3.7, uh, then you can expect that to be under leap Python 3.7. If it's under Python 9, will be under Python 9, uh, 3.9, and so on. So the current supported version is Python 3.8 uh, and in the next release we will migrate to Python 3.9. So please uh, continue to use the standard here. And also the logs, we will uh, put them under the distribution package. So we'll be here under logs and we will create this dynamically. Okay, and now the server is started and you see the different services are starting. So uh, it create uh, the certificate files that are used for a secure connection. Uh, it uh, start also the API service and then it start the different services. So FTS is divided in different services like the code service, the SSL, and uh, each service runs separately and then when we have installed the UI we will see that we can monitor them. At this point uh, the yum file has been created and is located if you have not changed the default under opt FTS config uh, dot yum. So let's try to uh, see what looks like. So under opt and opt is a uh, folder that is in the root of your Linux installation. 
you have a file called ftsconfig.yam and we can open this file and we can switch to not a bad <clears throat> and as you can see the file contains a lot of interesting information in regard to where is the address of FTP, uh, FTS, sorry, uh, and also the port and for the API, the port for federation, all of that can be set in this file. Uh, if you don't set in this file, you can also set dynamically in the UI. And we have also here the WebSocket key. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, important because if you want to have a secure connection with your uh, UI, you should uh, change this. Uh, if you are located inside a secure network, uh, it's irrelevant. So for the sake of this demo, we are not going to change it. But if you are aiming for security, remember, you should change this. So we are kind of happy with uh, the YAM file that has been created for us and we will move forward. The next step is to configure the web UI. Uh, the web UI is a optional component, however, is, it looks cool and is really useful. And typically, if you have not changed the location is under uh, this location here and you can also copy from the cool documentation directly this location and we can reuse it into our console but uh, you see that is the console in which we have started uh, FTS so keep in mind that if you start a Linux program in a console window you cannot use this console windows anymore so what we need to do is to go back and to use a WinSCP to start a new uh, instance of uh, Putin. So, and here we have two windows in parallel, and that is really useful. And we are going to CD in the proper location, and now we are located in uh, the same directory where uh, we are located here, or no? not yet so I will switch also here and you see in this location we have also created the config pi file now this file is uh, crucial because you need to configure that so that the UI works properly when the UI is properly installed you will find the config pi file and in WinSCP we can edit it here very comfortably and when you open it you will see three things that uh, are important number one the ip now if the ui and uh, the uh, fts uh, are on the same network you can even use local os however it is suggested to use the external uh, ip and you remember we can derive the external IP from the connection that we are uh, using here. So if I start here, the Freetag server demo instance, that is the IP that I'm using to connect the servers. I know that is correct. And I can reuse it. And the same IP again, we'll use here and then if we have changed the WebSocket key that is the one that you use for uh, connecting the UI to FTS we should also update this we have not done it and another thing that we use is the API key now the UI uses two different uh, strategies to connect to the backend. One is very dynamic and it's called WebSocket and requires this one. And another one is a standard REST API and requires this one. 
Now this one is a simple text and this one is also uh, in the database. That means that that is the token that has been created with the user admin and we can only change it after that we have started the UI for the first time. So we can now save this and we should be good. We can now jump back to the console that is the second console that is running in the same uh, folder where the UI is installed and here we uh, run sudo python3 run pi and if we have done everything correctly we should see that the UI uh, will start so it's still starting We can now navigate in our browser to the IP address column 5000 slash login and here we can log in with admin and password and as soon as we log in we will see the UI and you see that uh, we have here different indicators and basically they are saying everything is fine. Uh, the five services are active and one service is disabled. Uh, if something is red here, that will be bad for you. So the next thing that you want to do is to try to connect to your FTS and see if uh, you can connect a client. Also keep in mind that changing the password is a good idea. So we are going to do that. I'm going to click here on the profile and I will update my password for this. Uh, and remember that the token is also used here for um, the connection of the UI. So if you change this, you need to change also in the configuration. For now, we'll change my password to 123456. That is the most uh, unsecure password in the world. And I'll leave token as token. Okay, we have set our uh, admin to be super secure, and now we are going to test everything. So we look at uh, our server and we can see in the console that something is going on. And we'll see that as soon as we start a client, the client will send messages to our FTS. And those messages will be registered in the, the server. So you see, that is my client starting. And this uh, Wintag, Wintag is uh, is not the perfect uh, client, but it's not uh, you know the worst you can get. And we are currently connected to the server. We are getting messages, so we are good. And so that is for installation of Wintag server. So this concludes our uh, installation for today. Uh, next uh, videos we are going to cover uh, more in detail how you can add, add additional components such as the web map and also the video server and the integration server called FreeTalk Hub. So thank you and see you next time.